Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to my review of Glenmore 2 Chronicles, designed by Matthias Kramer and published by Funtales in 2019. This game was voted on by my Patreon supporters as a game that I would review, and this video has been created purely through the support of my Patreon campaign. So if you like the content that I make, please consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Glenmore 2 Chronicles is a new version of the original game Glenmore, which was released in 2010 and was very popular but really hard to get hold of. I had a German copy of the game myself and used paste up so that I could play it. The new version is a lot more than just new artwork and a much bigger box. It's effectively a second edition of the game with a number of changes. Now, like in all things, not everyone will agree with those changes and there are some people who prefer the original version. And while this review is going to be focused on the new version, I'm going to make the odd reference to the old version in case you own the original and you're watching this to see what is different. Let me give you a quick overview of the game first. If you already know how to play the game, feel free to skip ahead about one minute if you don't want to listen to this part. So Glenmore 2 Chronicles is set in 19th century Scotland, where each player represents the leader of a Scottish clan, expanding their territory and wealth to become the most successful. This involves creating pastures for livestock, growing barley to then produce whiskey, selling your goods at the markets and gaining control of special landmarks such as lochs and castles. The core mechanism of the game involves this board here, where players take tiles and add them to their own territories. Turns do not go around the table, instead it's the player at the back who takes the next turn and can take any tile from the track, advancing as far as they want to. After paying the cost on the tile, it's placed in their territory following certain rules, and then the tile activates along with all neighbouring tiles, triggering the production of resources, allowing you to move your Scotsman around, allowing you to trade at the market, and so on. Some tiles gain you the favour of another clan, which is all done on this extra board here. This is a new thing in this version of the game. The tiles are split into four stacks, and when a stack is empty, a scoring round happens, and players earn points based on how many they have of a certain thing compared to the other players. At the end of the game, players lose points for each tile they have in their territory in excess of the player with the smallest territory. And the player with the most points wins. I've already done three playthrough videos of this game on my channel. The first was in November 2019 where I taught a friend of mine how to play and then we played a two player game using Chronicle number two. Then I did a four player game on the 5th of June using Chronicle one and a three player game on the 12th of June using Chronicle three. So yeah, all of those videos are on the channel now if you want to see me teaching the game and playing through it. So let's get to the main thing about whether I like this game or not, and I do. To be fair, I was a big fan of the original game because I found the core mechanisms interesting. The decision about how far to move around the track and take the place you want is an interesting one. If you see a tile that you really like near the end of the track, you could take it, but you're missing out on all of the others, allowing the other players to get them. But if you don't take it, somebody else might. And the clever part is the final scoring. Players with larger territories are penalised, so you don't just want to hoover up all of the tiles, you need to take the right ones that fit with your strategy. Placing the tiles is also a little puzzle, which requires some planning ahead. Some tiles are river tiles, and they must be placed horizontally left or right of your starting tile, and you can only place tiles around one of your Scotsmen, so the position of your Scotsman is very important too. The original game also had some tiles which were roads, which also had to be placed vertically from your starting tile. That's been removed from this game, it's just the river now, uh, and I like that. The other bit I really like is the way the market works. I'm always a sucker for anything with supply and demand mechanisms, and in this game it's done really well and it's very simple. You need a cow? Buy one from the market. The number of empty spaces show how many are available, so here there are three cows available. So the cost is one, and you place the coin in the market. Now there's only two cows available and the cost to buy the next one is two. If somebody wanted to buy the last cow, it would now cost three. And now there's no cows left in the market. To sell, you simply take coins on the right hand space. So here, the market has no cows for sale. So if you sell a cow, you get three coins. And then the next cow you sell will get you two coins and so on. Now, money in the original game was zero sum. Apart from one tile that I think added two coins, there was no additional money added to the game, it just moved around between the players and the market. That was quite cool, but with this version it's opened up a lot more, there's lots of different ways to get more money, and that's opened up more possibilities and it feels less restrictive. I'm not sure whether I prefer that to the original one, because it, it was quite nice being zero sum and money being really tight, but yeah, they have removed that for this version of the game, and now there's lots of different ways of getting money. 
And the new clan board I really like. It just provides an extra bit of stuff to the game, putting the game closer into my wheelhouse of weight and depth. But many of the bonuses on here are one-off bonuses, and some of them are rewarding if you plan properly. For example, this one here gives you points for river tiles in your territory. So you can actually decide at the start of the game that you're going to go for that. This board adds an extra strategic layer to the game, which I really like. And all of this is just the base game. The game is called Glenmore 2 Chronicles, and the Chronicles part is a series of eight modular expansions that you can add to provide additional variety to your game. At the time of filming this review, I've only had a chance to play through the first three of these Chronicles. I've enjoyed them all. Each one of them I've played adds tweaks to the games that makes you play that game slightly differently. And what is also cool is that they are all compatible with each other, so you can use as many of them as you want. And in the rulebook, each one is given a complexity rating, which tells you how much time that adds to the game. Let me just touch on the theme of the game for a minute, and like a lot of games that I review, the theme is... Well, I'm not seeing much of it, to be honest. This game could be about anything, and I'm okay with that. The supply and demand that I've mentioned is kind of thematic, as is having to place river tiles next to each other, but apart from that, the game is the standard Euro game where you do stuff to get points. The special abilities of the locations I don't think are particularly thematically linked to real locations. So yeah, I don't think this game is strong in theme, but as I say, that's not an issue for me at all, because I, I, I rate mechanisms in games over theme, and I think the mechanisms of this game are fantastic. Now, player count and play time. I've played this game at two, three, and four players. I think it scales well. With two players, you should use the dummy player die, which simulates an extra player. And with three players, you may use the dummy player die to simulate a fourth player. The dummy player is actually really easy to maintain. It just moves around the board, takes tiles at random, and, and yes, yeah, simulates what another player would do. It does not, however, actually collect resources. So at the end of the round, when you're comparing how many resources you've got to the other players, you only count the real players. And in terms of playtime, the box says 60 to 120 minutes for a two to four player game. And that's actually about right. Now, your first game, as always, is going to be a little bit longer. But other than that, the playtime on the box, I think, is fairly accurate. The other thing to know about player count is that the number of tiles in the game is fixed. That doesn't change based on the player count. So in a four player game, each player is going to get fewer turns than they would do in a three player game without the dummy player. Fewer turns means taking fewer tiles, meaning you might not get to do everything you want to do in the game. It's not a big thing, but it's just something to be aware of if you go from a three-player game to a four-player game, you're not going to get to do as many things. Components-wise, the original Glenmore was in a small box and you could transport it anywhere. The components were of their time. The thin tiles, artwork was okay and functional. The new version, gigantic box with loads of stuff in it. So I can see the argument that you can just keep your original version of the game if you feel that the new version is mostly the same, uh, because obviously big box, harder transport around, more storage space required. But yeah, personally, I think the new additions to the game, uh, new additions to the game, make it worthwhile. So overall, the components are good. Uh, the wooden insert, by the way, that I'm using is from Laserox, which keeps everything together and looks nice. It doesn't come with the game. The cardstock in the game is thick and chunky, which is good. I would have preferred the victory point denominations to be of different sizes instead of all the same. The wooden components are nice, but be aware there are a lot of stickers in this game. Now, I don't mind a relaxing few hours in front of the TV putting stickers on things, but I know a lot of people complained about this, and some people even went as far as saying, I'm not going to spend hours stickering them. The thing is, silk screen printing actually costs quite a lot, uh, and this is an expensive game, so I can see why that wasn't an option. And some of the stickers are a bit pointless. Putting a grey stone sticker on a grey piece of wood really wasn't worth it, and if they had space on the sticker sheet, I think stickers on the cows would have been better. The Scotsman, however, when stickered, look really cool. But if you're like me, and you have to get the stickers on them just perfect, you're going to be there a while using a pair of tweezers. The other minor thing is the small markers that you use on the clan board. These are a little bit too small and fiddly and would have been better a little bit bigger, although I get that that would take up more space on the clan board. One problem with small components like this when you use thick cardstock is peeling. Now, I've, I've had one of these tokens peel uh, and it wasn't a big problem. I just, I just stuck it back on with glue. Uh, I was a bit worried that some of the other ones would peel as well, but none of the others have, so it was just that one. So, I know I've mentioned lots of issues with components, but I'm, I'm really just nitpicking here. None of them are big issues at all, and overall, components are good. As for the rulebook, bearing in mind I already knew mostly how to play the game when reading this rulebook, but other than that, it was well-structured, lots of images, lots of examples, 
And what, rather than cr trying to cram it all into a smaller space, uh, they actually you know, expanded it and, and used the space that they had to make a very clear rule book. My main criticism is that the rule book isn't gender neutral, which is a shame in 2020 to see English rule books still written with the male pronoun. And I know not everybody agrees with that. And every time I mention it, I get criticism for saying it, but I'm going to carry on saying it. So overall, a very good game from a new publisher, one that I am happy to play anytime. And I definitely want to play the other Chronicles at some point. Whether I will ever mix multiple Chronicles in together, I'm not sure. I think you should probably only do that if you're experienced with the game and you can play the game without any of the Chronicles, which I recommend for your first time. Thank you very much to Funtales for a re review copy of the game and thank you to Laserox for the insert. At the time of filming this video, a new expansion has been announced for the game, which is going to Kickstarter soon, which includes a solo mode and a whole boatload of extra Chronicles. I would like to be covering the solo mode on the channel at some point soonish. If you like this video, please remember to click the thumbs up, subscribe and click the little bell to be notified about future videos. And as mentioned at the start, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making this video possible. And if you like the content that I make and you want to support the channel, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.